Hello and welcome to Pennside Presbyterian Church. I'm Pastor Dave coming to you once again with a word of hope for today. To begin, we have an interesting new hymn, When All Is Ended, by David Cullen. David. Alleluia, alleluia. When all is ended, time and troubles past. Shall be all mended, sin and death outcast. In hope we sing, and hope to sing at last. Alleluia, alleluia. As in the night when lightning flickers free. And gives a glimpse of distant hill and tree. Each flash of good discloses what will be. Alleluia, alleluia. Against all hope, our weary times have known. Ended, peace declared, compassion shown. Great days of freedom, tyrants overthrown. Alleluia, alleluia. Then do not cheat the poor who long for bread. With dream worlds in the sky or in the head. But sing of slaves set free and children fed. Alleluia, alleluia. With earthly faith we sing a song of heaven. All life fulfilled, all love, all long forgiven. Christ is our sign of hope, for Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. With all creation, pain and anger past. Exhausted, love supreme at last. Alive in God, we'll sing unsurpassed. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Thank you, David. Let us pray. Creator and sustainer, whose love and power are boundless, redeemer and resurrected one, whose self-giving love and sacrifice are my hope and song, helper and breath of life who brings life, empowers, inspires, thank you for the story of your redemption. Because of all you have done, do, will do, I am alive, together with your saints passionately pursuing your kingdom. Thank you for the gift of salvation, and that by your Spirit you have given us communion with all the saints. Continue to help us grow together in unity and chase mature faith, growing up in all you have prepared for us. Teach me, Lord, to call on you, to trust, to hope, to believe. Teach me, Lord, to walk with you daily, trusting in all you have done, are doing, will do. May your extraordinary love and goodness shape our all-too-ordinary life. And may your incarnation, your Spirit's presence, and your continued intercession be ever and always our new normal. Amen. Our scripture this week comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 13 to chapter 5, verse 1. Paul writes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke, 
We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. We do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look at not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We often call ourselves to worship with the words of the psalmist. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We begin our worship with a call to daily renewal. Daily renewal creates a resilient spirit in us that allows us to bend and not break when the weight of the world is on our shoulders. And certainly during this pandemic, we have felt that weight. Social distancing isn't easy. Masks are uncomfortable. And who likes needles? This day, we face challenges and feel how heavy life can be. We are at the intersection where faith isn't a luxury or an accessory. It's essential. It's what sees us through. Resilience is a core competency for living in this world. This world we know today and this world as it is becoming tomorrow. Because one thing that is for certain is that change is constant, as is the need to adapt to this new day. Resilience is illustrated by one of my favorite stories. Sir Robert the Bruce was a great knight and Scotland's greatest hero. He was George Washington before George Washington. But there was a time when the tide of public favor was against him. He was running for his life and it seemed like the British would soon capture him. Exhausted, he took refuge in a barn and fell asleep. When he woke up, he noticed a spider in the rafters. The spider spun a strand of web and tried to connect it to the next beam. It swung across, but the web did not stick. It tried again and again and again and again, until finally the web stuck and the spider could weave its web. Sir Robert the Bruce saw this and said to himself, If this spider can keep trying after so many efforts have failed, so can I. Adversity lay ahead. So did struggle. But history remembers the field known as Bannockburn, where Sir Robert won the day and drove the British from Scotland. The Apostle Paul invites us to develop a resilient spirit when he writes, So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Develop a resilient spirit. What you see is what you get. So practice daily renewal. Once upon a time in a universe long ago and far away, there was a magical tribe of humans known as computer programmers. And these computer programmers were devoted to their quest for W-Y-S-I-W-Y-G, WYSIWYG, software that worked so well that what you see is what you get. Today, WYSIWYG isn't a goal. It's an expectation. It's so basic that as I type WYSIWYG in this message, my computer spell check offers its benediction with nary a red line to be seen. What you see is what you get is no modern revelation. Paul points to it when he writes, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. Our perspective on our circumstances has incredible power in determining how we will respond to our circumstances. Will we be resilient and find a way to adapt? Or will we be that stiff reed that Confucius teaches us is broken in the wind. Consider this parable of the shoe salesman. Two shoe salesmen were sent to Africa to evaluate business prospects for their company. Salesman number one sent the following report. Situation hopeless. No one wears shoes. 
Salesman 2 sent this. Tremendous business opportunity. No one is wearing shoes. Paul invites us to view our circumstances from the perspective of the resurrection. God raised Jesus from the dead. God did that in this world. So there is no telling what God will do next in this world. There is no limit to what God can do in this world and in our lives. That faith gives us perspective on our circumstances. Life happens. What do we see? This isn't the end of the world. This is slight, momentary affliction. This isn't empty, meaningless, and purposeless. This is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Life happens. The circumstances are the same. But seeing them from the eternal perspective of resurrection makes everything and anything new. Even us. Possibilities abound. What you see is what you get. Develop a resilient spirit that sees those possibilities and seizes them. Practice daily renewal. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, we praise you for this is the day that you have made. And on these days, O Lord, that you have made, you are present and you are powerful. And you are at work. O oh Lord, in these days when there is chaos and there is confusion, there is discouragement, there is disheartenment, O oh Lord, help us to see with eyes of faith. Help us to see with a vision that is informed by the resurrection, that with you death never has the last word. The last word is life. Hate never has the last word. The last word is love. Despair never has the last word. The last word is hope. Oh, Lord, you know the words that are on our lips. You know the words that seem to be seared on our hearts. You know, oh, Lord, our struggles. Oh, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit today, I pray that each one watching would hear your voice speaking your word, offering the assurance of that eternal glory that awaits that you are preparing us for now. Oh, Lord, help us to live each day with heaven in sight. And help us to live in such a way that we draw heaven nearer to earth. Oh, Lord, we offer this prayer through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our lives are full of transitions. Everything changes. Amidst all change at every stage of transition, God's saving love for us and all creation abides. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, be with us, and remain with us always. Thanks for watching. Amen.